If we want to design a state variable compensator for a certain plant, the plant needs to be both controllable and observable. In this video, we define the concepts of controllability and observability, and we look at how to analyze the controllability and observability of a state variable system. If we want to design full state feedback, which is part of the state variable compensator, the plant must be controllable. Let's first look at the definition of controllability for a general system, then apply this definition to linear state variable systems and discuss how to test whether the system is controllable. The definition of controllability states that a system is completely controllable if it is possible to find an unconstrained input U that would cause the system to reach some desired state X1 from any initial state in a finite time period. Informally, this means that we can use the input to change the states to anything we want. Let's now make this definition specific to our case where we only look at a linear time invariant state variable systems. We now make use of the solution to the non-homogeneous state equation which calculates how the states would change for a given input. The system is controllable if it is possible to find an input U that would steer the system to the desired state X1 for every possible initial state X0. It is very difficult to work with this definition of controllability, so we want to have an easy test for controllability. It is possible to prove that one can get to this test from this requirement. However, we do not prove it in this video. For the controllability test, we first construct the controllability matrix where the left column is given by the vector B, the next column is given by matrix A times vector B, etc. The system is controllable if the rank of the controllability matrix is the same as the number of states or, put differently, U has full rank. This is true if and only if U is invertible, which means that the determinant of U is non-zero. To summarize the test, we construct the controllability matrix U and calculate its determinant. If it is non-zero, the system is controllable, otherwise it is not controllable. Let's now move on to the concept of observability. If we want to design an observer, which is another part of the state variable compensator, the plant must be observable. We again first look at the definition of the observability and then at an observability test. The system is observable if we can calculate the value of the initial state from knowledge of the input and the output over a finite time period. Informally, this means that we can reconstruct the states of a system using only the input and output of the system. When we apply this definition to the linear time invariant state variable case, we use the output equation in which we substitute the solution to the non-homogeneous state equation to say that a system is observable if it is possible to solve for the initial state x0 given the input and the output to the system over a finite time period. It is again possible to prove that we can get from this to an easy observability test and we also do not cover the proof in this video. For the observability test we construct the observability matrix V where the first row is the vector C, the second row is the vector C times the matrix A, etc. The system is now observable if the observability matrix is full rank, which will only be the case if the determinant is non-zero. If the determinant of V is zero, the system is not observable. Let's now look at how the controllability and observability of a system change if we transform the states of a system. This is given by the invariance property for controllability and observability. We state the results without proof. Refer to the textbook for more information. 
the invariance property says that if we transform the states of a system from x to x bar using the non-singular transformation matrix P, then the rank of the controllability matrix for the transformed system is equal to the rank of the controllability matrix of the original system. This means that the determinant of the controllability matrix of the transformed system is non-zero if and only if the determinant of the controllability matrix of the original system is non-zero, which in turn means that the transformed system is controllable if and only if the original system is controllable. The same idea holds for observability of a system. The transformed system is observable if and only if the original system is observable. The invariance property tells us that controllability and observability are structural properties of the system. If we simply redefine the states, we do not change the structure or dynamics of the system, and its controllability and observability therefore do not change. To end this video, we look at controllability and observability of a specific system namely a system with distinct real poles and the system given in the modal canonical form. This case will give us additional insight into the meaning of controllability and observability. For a system with n distinct real poles, the state variable equations are in this form, where the matrix capital lambda is a diagonal matrix with the poles on the diagonal. It is now possible to prove that the system is controllable if and only if the elements in the B vector are all non-zero and the system is observable if and only if the elements in the C vector are all non-zero. Let's now look at what this means. The block diagram of the system is shown here where this is the mode corresponding to the first pole, this is the mode corresponding to the second pole, etc. The system is controllable if all these input gains are non-zero. If the input gain of one of the modes is zero, then the input cannot influence this mode and the system is not controllable. We can therefore understand controllability as the ability of the input to influence all the modes of the system. The system is observable if all the output gains of the modes are non-zero. If the output gain of one mode is zero, then this mode makes no contribution to the output, and the system is not observable. We can therefore understand observability as the fact that the outputs of all the modes contribute to the output of the system, and the output can therefore be used to reconstruct all the states. A system must be controllable and observable to enable us to design a state variable compensator and these properties are therefore vital to analyze before we attempt to control the system.